creating a high quality portfolio may be challenging, even for senior designers with years of experience. Today, we're going to find out why is that and what are the most common mistakes. Over the course of my design journey, between reviewing the portfolios of the candidates at my jobs and providing feedback for design students, I reviewed over a thousand portfolios. It turns out that creating a high quality product design portfolio can be difficult, even for people who design digital products for a living. Years ago, when I was starting in the design industry, I thought that the majority of professional portfolios out there were truly amazing. I thought that I was the only one struggling to present my work. All the portfolio inspiration websites, they were showcasing case studies from the biggest companies that were really high quality with amazing design process and storytelling, as well as personal branding and interactions on the website. In reality, having a simple, correctly executed portfolio can already bring you a long way and can let you stand out from the crowd of other designers. I think that spending additional time on correcting common mistakes and elevating your work is really worth it. There is a long inventory of mistakes that I saw, but today I would like to tell you about three main themes that I differentiated and how they damage the portfolio. The first theme is forgetting about usability. As ironic as it sounds, the product designers who are showcasing the great UX solutions in their case studies, they sometimes forget about the overall usability of their portfolio. Here's the list of shortcomings that I've noticed. Overdoing the interactions, adding things like unusual scrolls, heavy animations, or effects following the cursor. Those things are really prone to error because of different operating systems and browsers. In addition to that, they sometimes keep the attention away from the main content of the portfolio. In extreme cases, people might even leave the website because they don't know how to use it or they can't access the content. Password protected pages and portfolios. I think that gating the content is not really a good idea unless it's absolutely necessary. I understand that sometimes projects cannot be available for public display, but then it's your responsibility to share the password with the recruiter and make it really easy for them to access the website. Coming soon projects. If someone is actively looking for a job and sharing their portfolio, all the case studies should be available. Advertising projects that are not ready yet causes unnecessary friction. Broken link. I was shocked when I saw how many portfolios have a link between the thumbnail on the homepage and the case study broken. It means that you simply cannot access this project. A QA is a must have before releasing your portfolio and sharing it with companies. Portfolio available only on download. This approach may feel a little outdated and also can prevent some reviewers from seeing your work because some companies limit what their employees can download on their computers. Not using the HTTPS protocol. This is another way of preventing your work from being seen. If a browser classifies a website as questionable, some people may not want to risk opening it. Not ready for mobile. Today, majority of web traffic comes from mobile, so your portfolio needs to be adjusted to smaller screen sizes. Although it is safe to assume that a recruiter will be using their desktop computer to review your application, you never know who they would like to share your website with and what device they will be using. In addition to avoiding those common mistakes that I've just listed, I would also recommend to QA your portfolio before releasing and perform some usability testing with friends and family just to make sure that everything is understandable and it's easy to navigate. The second thing is not enough context. If I were to name the most important factor when talking about the project, that would be context. It is essential to telling every story. And our project case study is a story. When we're not providing enough background information, we risk sounding like children who are starting in the middle of the story, then they build the narrative sentence after sentence, and at the end of the day, they're surprised and confused why they are not being understood correctly. It is necessary to provide context for our portfolio reviewers, both on high level and on case study level. High level context is about you. Some designers forget to introduce themselves, talk about their backgrounds, the companies they worked for, or the industries they're interested in. Sometimes it's even hard to find social media links or contact information. Some portfolios fall into the here are a couple of case studies category, and I think it's a missed opportunity for building trust. Context in the case studies. When talking about the project, some designers tend to jump straight into the details, and it's really important to provide background information so that people can build an understanding. Things like what the company is, what the product is about, what was the team, and also what was your contribution? Were you working freelance or full-time? Were you in an agency or in an in-house team? 
The third theme is the work does not speak for itself. There is a saying that a good work speaks for itself, and it may be true for art or fashion, but it's definitely not true for product design. Your role is to walk the reviewer through your way of thinking and the, your decision-making process. Overall, there are a couple of mistakes that have differentiated within this theme. Project thumbnails without titles. Unlike in the case of visual design disciplines, product design benefits from text as much as it does from visuals. Sometimes the title of the project says more than the thumbnail. It's important to encourage the recruiters to go through your case studies and give them the opportunity to build an understanding and connection between the topics in your portfolio and the needs of the company. Mockups without annotations. I think this is the most popular mistake out there. Even though mockups usually are related to the section that they are put in and they are surrounded by the text that gives some context, sometimes it is really hard to understand what to pay attention to on the mockup. To prevent that, I would recommend to add annotations, a title, and sometimes even blur out part of the mockup that are not really relevant in this particular context. Project thumbnails linking to an application or a website. In general, a reviewer doesn't get any value from this kind of presentation. What they are looking for is a story behind your work and to get to know your decision-making process. Linking to an application or a website is just a surface-level information. In addition to that, you have no influence over how the website or an application will change over time. So sometimes you may be linking to a work that is not really yours and that you wouldn't like the recruiters to see. Creating a great product design portfolio is an art in itself. It takes a lot of time and effort to tell the story behind your projects. Remember about the usability, context, and that your designs are not self-explanatory. If you would like to level up your portfolio, you can join my free 5-day portfolio masterclass. During this week, you can make a significant progress and improve your chances of getting hired. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and you can subscribe to my channel for more product design-related content.